Well, it's the Mother's Day weekend edition of the Garden Show, and a lot of questions today, especially because of the fact that we had a hard frost. Yeah, and the damage is showing up from the last frost. We had somebody call about a Japanese maple getting burned, and we're starting to see that damage. We'll continue to see the damage over the next few weeks because we had a frost last night. We're expecting a frost again on Monday and Tuesday, so we'll see damage to those trees well into June. And also, somebody sent a couple pictures of uh, the wisteria also suffering some uh, frost damage. Yeah, wisteria are very, very delicate in this area. They don't grow much past probably lancing, uh, so they get frosted off on a regular basis in this area. They typically don't bloom very consistently in Battle Creek. I always tell people if you're planting one, expect to only see it bloom once every five or ten years. A uh, question about strawberries and blueberries. Uh, they did the right thing in covering them off to prevent the frost, but with a couple of uh, hit or miss days of frost, uh, what's the proper way to take care of them? Uncover them this morning or, or today to allow the bees to get in to pollinize the blooms. My blueberries are in full bloom right now and they need the bees to pollinize to make that fruit. If you keep them covered up, they won't be able to get in there and pollinize and do their work. But when it gets close to dark again, you want to cover them up. Maybe not so much tonight because we're not expecting frost tonight, but definitely Sunday night into Monday morning and also into Tuesday. So not a bad idea to cover them. Did have a question about um, uh, pussy willow trees and branches that are dying consistently. And uh, there's a disease behind that. Yeah, they get a bacterial canker. And if you prune from branch to branch and don't dip your pruners in a bleach and water solution, it can create issues and spread the disease that much more. Uh, pussy willows are very notorious for having die back like that. And a lot of times you need to cut at least 12 to 18 inches below where the canker was. And it'll probably continue to spread. There's no chemical control for it other than just pruning it. Actually, I had a long question today as well as somebody uh, noticed that there was a big ball of a different grass seed that was in there and we always have to remind people because it's a certain one that you do not want to have. Yeah, it was tall fescue and a lot of the cheaper grass seed blends contain Kentucky 31 tall fescue and you want to avoid that because it just grows in big circular clumps. Very difficult to mow and the only way to get it out of the lawn is either dig it out or spray it off with Roundup. And also somebody that was uh, looking for good hardy trees that go 30 to 45 feet up out in the open area. But uh, there's quite a few suggestions, but you have to monitor it. Yeah, you can use uh, crab apples work well, dogwoods would work well. Make sure you're getting a grafted variety. Uh, some of the dogwood varieties uh, that have been grafted are much better as far as blooming and shape. They'll get anywhere from 25 to 40 feet tall, depending on the variety. Also, you could use like a red sunset maple, as long as the soil is not a real heavy clay. Another dry week expected, and we are definitely in moderate drought status for a second straight week. What do we got to do this week? All those plants that got damaged by the frost, it's a good idea to go out there and water. Even if the tree's been in the ground for 8 or 10 years, or the plant's been in the ground for 8 or 10 years, go out there and put the hose on it and let it drip real slow and run for an hour or two on each plant because they're going to need it. With the frost damage, they need all the energy they can get to grow out of it. All right, sounds good. We'll do this all again next week. Sounds good.